It looks like the wear and tear from repeated stresses on your spine have given you a condition called spinal stenosis. So we're going to have to perform a procedure called a lumbar laminectomy to relieve that pressure. The success rate is favourable, but there can be uh, significant ongoing issues. There can be infection, there can be nerve damage and ongoing pain. Well, now that I've explained the procedure to you, are you ready to proceed with your spinal surgery? Manual handling generally suffers from poor PR because musculoskeletal injuries tend to happen bit by bit. It's a creeping disease that can sneak up and barely notice over long periods of time. Because manual handling induced damage can consist of many minor injuries where you feel no pain, no discomfort. It's an expensive burden to the Australian workplace. But what about the potential cost to you, the individual? What is manual handling? Manual handling is any activity that requires force to lift, push, pull or carry, or otherwise move or restrain an object. Tasks that most of us perform every day. Most jobs involve some type of manual handling, so essentially all workers are at risk, no matter how minimal they believe their work to be. Structure of the back. Many of my patients nowadays have injuries that have stemmed from their work. I've had patients that have literally spent thousands on all sorts of treatments looking for that miracle cure. If only they'd followed the simple procedure to begin with, their quality of life would be so much better. The spine is made up of a series of bones called vertebrae. Between each of these vertebrae is a shock absorbing structure called a disc. The term slip disc is actually a misnomer because each disc is attached firmly to the vertebrae above and below it. However, the disc may be damaged by the tearing of those outer layers of fibre. Without you feeling any pain when pressure is exerted on the disc. Risk assessment. Freddie cracked it one day and paid a visit to the supply office. He wanted to know why they couldn't supply the parts on one big outer so we could carry them around on the forklift with a specially built rack for easy access to the picking. One simple idea has saved us heaps of work and our backs too, I reckon. Take time to look at the manual handling tasks in your workplace. Think about the possible risks associated with performing these tasks and discuss ways that these risks can be reduced or eliminated. Once the risks have been assessed and recognised, ways of reducing or eliminating the risks should be looked at. Lifting techniques and mechanical aids. Young Sally's away again today, the third day in a row. She has torn ligaments in her right shoulder, the result of trying to lift a box down from the top shelf in the storeroom. What do I do? We have procedures and mechanical aids to make the place safe. And the guys cut corners. There are hundreds of mechanical aids all designed to minimise manual handling in the workplace. If you are fortunate enough to work for an organisation that has invested in mechanical aids, it is important that you do your part and utilise them. Consider a dual lift if an object is too heavy or awkward to be lifted by just one person. Conclusion The topics in this presentation not only are beneficial to the workplace, but can also be adopted at home as well. Ask yourself just one simple question. Am I doing my job the safest way possible? <laughs>